in today's video, I'm going to be sharing the five things you ought to know when it comes to caring for your fiddle leaf fig. Now, these are the houseplants that really sort of lit the fire, the houseplant fire uh, within me and started my whole YouTube channel. Now, I absolutely love these plants. Uh, and like I said, they kind of started this whole crazy thing. I have this one that I'm holding and I have a huge like 12, 13, 14, 15 foot one uh, right behind me. Now, this one back there is the original uh, plant. Now, I had pruned off quite a few leaves way back when, about three years ago, and you know, the internet kind of went crazy. Uh, it's still thriving, it's still alive, and like I said, in today's video, I really wanna share those things that you really ought to know, and I'm also going to be restaking up this big one. I wanna get into some notching, kind of thicken out bushy, make the plant a lot more bushier. Uh, I'm gonna be explaining that as well, so stay tuned for all of that and more. All right guys, as you can tell, this thing is a monster. It's so huge, it's grown quite a lot. It's done really, really well in the last three years uh, since I picked this up from Costco eons and eons and eons ago. Now, uh, I think I'm on like a two or three foot stool. I'm six foot and there's still a couple of feet until the top of this thing. So it's definitely in that sort of 12, 13, you know, foot uh, height range. And the first thing I wanna start with is uh, just some really important maintenance for these plants. When they get to this size, and even when they're smaller, um, if you don't rotate your plant, uh, what will happen is kind of what you can see here, all the leaves are kind of turned into one direction. So it's really important throughout the course of the year, I would say, you know, even maybe once a month, just do a, you know, a nice job of slightly rotating your plant so all of the leaves are getting uh, sunlight, especially if your sunlight source is coming from one direction, which for most of us with indoor plants, that is the case. And uh, I'm also going to be staking this up with a new stake. I think this, I have an eight foot stake and uh, I'll be removing the original bamboo stake that came with it. The other sort of thing with that first ought to know is take a uh, paper towel with some warm or lukewarm water and it's really important uh, beyond just rotating your plant to really um, give your leaves a really good wipe with that warm paper towel. Um, because, uh, you know, even indoors, as far as I know, it doesn't rain indoors. So in order, you know, there's no rain that is washing off any sort of dust or grime that accumulates over time. So it is important that we help the plant out and just uh, give it a nice good wipe. So all of the sun rays, when they hit that leaf, the leaf can do its job to really absorb what it needs from the sun and of course, any kind of dirt or grime buildup will slow that process down and kind of hinder it. So it is important to do that. Uh, I have quite a lot of work ahead of me just to give this a nice rub down. I haven't done that in a couple of months, so I'll get on that. But uh, let's jump into some of the other critical care tips that I wanna share and the other things you ought to know. Thanks for checking out this video. I'm Tyler. If you like what you're seeing or you find this video to be useful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Better yet, you can hit that subscribe button. Now to really show me some love, click on the bell for alerts and notifications for future content. Don't forget to check out my merch store, tylermossop.com. I almost forgot that I needed to restake this, so I just got rid of the sort of twist tie that was keeping this connected to the bamboo stake. And I'm going to carefully put that down. Now I picked up this uh, stake at my local nursery and I'm, it should be able to go in the exact same spot the original bamboo stake was in. I'm just kind of very carefully, ah, oh, nice, uh, fit in there. I'm just gonna do my part to kind of watch the leaves, but also get this connected. All right, so I think that actually works out perfectly. Be right back. 
so before I get into notching, uh, potentially even removing a couple of leaves or two on my giant fiddle leaf fig behind me, maybe the small one too, uh, I just wanna touch on some of those things uh, that you ought to know, some of those critical care tips. So let's first start with light. Um, and actually before we even touch on to light or water, any of that, uh, it really truly breaks my heart when sometimes on TV or on programs or if I'm over at a friend's house, whatever the case may be, and I just see a really sad fiddle leaf fig, uh, it just really breaks my heart. These can be really challenging for some folks to care for at home, and that's in part, uh, you know, they look great, but it's in part where they uh, naturally uh, thrive in the wilderness and in nature in parts of Africa, um, and just some of those conditions can be really hard to replicate uh, in home. Uh, in our homes, especially if uh, you live in the Northeast, uh, the Boston area like I do. Um, so there is that to consider, but there are things you can do to really ensure that uh, it's able to thrive and really kind of flourish as much as possible. And that definitely starts with, you know, rotating the plant, uh, wiping the leaves down, um, every few weeks or once a month, like I mentioned at the uh, onset of this video. So definitely keep in mind those things are very important. But let's jump into uh, critical care for light. So the second thing you ought to know when it comes to caring for your fiddle leaf fig and in terms of lighting, these plants do really great, again, in bright sort of indirect or filtered light. So it's getting hits of some little direct sunlight, but you know, parts of it are shaded. So bright and direct light or filtered uh, light is ideal. Um, you know, that's what I would really recommend. If you are exposing your fiddle leaf fig to too much direct sunlight, that's when the leaves can start to get uh, brown and crispy and you know, it just, it's not a great look. You might even experience uh, leaves falling. So my advice here is place your fiddle leaf fig in a part of your home that's not close to any entryways, especially if you experience winter, you don't want any of that cold air kind of coming through and just shocking your plant. So put it in a place where it's going to avoid those lower temperatures, but also have really good bright indirect light. In my case, uh, I have a huge skylight and some south facing windows. It's about, um, I don't know, about 10 feet or more away from any entryway. So it's not getting any draftiness and it does get a lot of great light when it is sunny outside. Uh, and because it's so many feet removed from those windows, it's considered to be more on the bright and direct light. So that's the second thing you ought to know. The third thing you ought to know is watering. And I think this is where I've had a lot of sort of um, learning and growth to do, especially when I first got these plants. And I think it may be the same for a lot of you out there, uh, learning how to effectively water these plants um, is really one of the biggest kind of hurdles that you need to overcome in order to really get these to thrive and flourish. Now, the best advice I can give you when it comes to watering your fiddle leaf fig is think about the seasons. In the spring and summer, you wanna make sure that you're providing your fiddle leaf fig with enough water that it's kind of staying nice and moist. The best way to do this is with the finger test, you can put a finger on the topsoil, uh, push it down about an inch or two, and if it's really bone dry, then do uh, yourself and your fiddle leaf fig a favor, provide it a really good thorough watering, um, and that's in the spring and summer. So also, again, it's always a function of the amount of light that it's receiving, so just keep an eye on that. It could be, you know, every week, every other week that you're giving it a really healthy watering. Now, the uh, difference with these plants with some of the others is you wanna change that up when it comes to the winter time. So the fall and the winter, um, you're going to kind of back off from watering it as much. Um, so where these plants live in the nature, I think they get a sort of rainy or wet season and you wanna do your best to kind of replicate that in your home. So spring, summer in the growing season, as we like to call it, that's when you're going to be using the finger test, testing that uh, every week or two giving it a good healthy watering. In the winter, you're gonna want to maybe water it a little bit less and less frequently. Uh, so less quantity and you know less frequently. So maybe you know once a month, you're giving it a good watering and that kind of thing. Um, you should be experiencing new growth. The leaves on these plants always come off at the top. That's where the new growth sprouts out. 
if you are seeing any sort of little dotting uh, on your plant or on those new growth leaves, that one sort of explanation to that is that you are overwatering your fiddle leaf fig. So again, I'll just repeat that. If you're seeing any of those little brown spots on the fiddle leaf fig with the new growth leaves, that could mean that it's too, the soil is too soggy, too wet, it's being overwatered cut back on your watering if that's the case. So the fourth thing you ought to know is if you do uh, prune any leaves off of these trees or you you know cut into it for notching or whatever the case may be, the thing you ought to know is that it has, there's like this sappy, this white opaque, somewhat translucent sort of sap on these plants, it is poisonous. So if you are going to be doing any sort of pruning um, or cutting into this plant for whatever the case may be, it is very important that you use use uh, clean shears, clean uh, knife. Um, you can just wash those things um, with soapy water, warm water to clean them. I would run anything through the dishwasher if it's, you know, for personal use. It's not recommended, obviously. Um, and just make sure if you're touching any of that sap that you're thoroughly washing your hands. So that's a really important consideration. Um, now that this thing is staked up, I've got to kind of take a look at it um, and decide where I'm going to uh, potentially notch this thing so that I can get some more fullness because right now it's just growing extraordinarily high and I think I need to fill this thing out so uh, you know our living room can be even more of a jungle. So I have my clean pair of shears right here and I'm actually going to start by just pruning some of the lower leaves on this plant. Now one of the benefits, at least one of the benefits as I see it to pruning uh, a fiddle leaf fig, especially some of the lower leaves, is what will happen is it will help sort of thicken the uh, stem or the trunk, if you will, of your fiddle leaf fig. And why I kind of believe that's a benefit is over time when they get to the sort of 12, 13, 14 foot size, having that sort of thicker trunk uh, will be more tree-like and it will just be more stable um, and sort of less movement, if you will, because if it's really thin and it's not staked, it's just gonna be moving around all over the place. So I do kind of see that as a benefit. You never wanna to prune too many leaves. You obviously wanna leave enough foliage on there so that it can still uh, be healthy, photosynthesize all of the uh, indirect sun that it's receiving or that filtered sunlight. Uh, but again, one of those benefits is the thicker trunk. Clean leaves, pay attention and watch out for um, any of that sap that's coming off it. And I'm just gonna go in and carefully get rid of this lower foliage like I mentioned. And some of these leaves are quite small. Um, so just go ahead like so and just step back, take a look. I think that's probably fine for now. This is still, um, you know, quite a small plant, at least relative to the other larger one that I have. But uh, yeah. All right, I'm gonna go wash my hands of any of that sap that I may touched but I'm gonna set this aside and move over to the big one for some notching. So there are a few more, uh, a couple of tips that I wanna share with you still beyond the notching, but I wanted to jump into the notching uh, with you now. So just kind of out of the gate, the reason uh, you notch is to basically encourage the plant to put out um, not new leaves, but new, basically new stems with multiple leaves on it to really kind of, like I alluded to earlier, make it a thicker, bushier plant. And there are definitely some important considerations that you'll need to make when notching, um, including some of the things that we've already talked about, about being aware of the sap and danger of that and how poisonous it can be. But uh, definitely want a clean, sharp knife. Now, where to notch and how to do it is what I'm gonna kind of cover right now. Uh, so. Putting a notch, which is basically a cut, uh, and if you can cut on a diagonal, even better. Um, you wanna kind of go in about a third of the way to the stem and just create a kind of cut like this where you cut once and then cut, cut twice and create a little notch in the plant. Now there is an ideal place and location to do this. It's right above um, a leaf node. So there's some space here on this plant and I'm gonna go in right above this uh, leaf node here and I'm going to cut uh, first down into it about a third of the way and then I'm going to come back in uh, to the top and remove that little piece very carefully and I'll come around and show you this, uh, I'll give you a close up. 
so I'm hoping you can see this okay. This is the knife uh, that I used just recently just to notch this just right now. Um, and as you can see, some of that white sort of fluid on there is the sap that I'm referring to. And let's see if I can turn this around. You can see the piece here uh, that I've notched out and what it kind of looks like, how deep it is and how big. But this should really encourage, uh, like I said, more growth on my fiddle leaf fig. I'm gonna go ahead and notch it in a few more places and then we can get into uh, the fourth and fifth thing you ought to know. So I'm gonna put another notch just above this dormant leaf down here. Just very carefully. All right, first, Cut in, just going in for the second one here to create that nice notch. Not sure if I'm getting a third of the way into the stem, but I think that should do. All right, very sappy. All right, I'm just gonna put that on my cheat on a paper, piece of paper towel and just pick maybe one more location here uh, that seems suitable. Maybe just above this one here. Get rid of that. Oh. Oh, just be very careful with your sharp knife. All right, it's definitely a notch. All right, oh, lost that piece. Be careful. All right, so that's three notches in the plant. I'm really curious and definitely will share the progress on how that works and if um, any new stems develop. Now, the fourth thing you ought to know when it comes to caring for these is definitely humidity is key. This is really, really big. You definitely need to supplement humidity. This guy lives right beside a humidifier uh, in our place. And the reason for that is you know, especially in the winter time, it can get very dry and uh, there can be a, a lack of humidity in the air. So by, um, you know, keeping this right beside the humidifier, it's helping. It could probably use a couple of humidifiers beside it, but, you know, keeping that humidity level above 60% is you know obviously the goal and the aim um, if you are unsure of what your humidity levels are at your home you can get a hygrometer and that will read out or just digitally display the level of moisture in the air in that surrounding area uh, and that will help you keep an eye on the humidity levels but let me kind of clean this up and then i'll share that final thing that you ought to know when it comes to caring for your gorgeous beautiful fiddle leaf figs Last but definitely not least, the fifth thing you ought to know when it comes to caring for your fiddle leaf fig is fertilizing and fertilization. Now, uh, ultimately there are fertilizers especially made for your fiddle leaf fig. If you can find those online on Amazon or at your local nursery, then even better. If you are kind of figuring out for yourself, this is where my tip comes in. You're gonna to want to look for something that's a little bit higher in nitrogen and you know use that fertilizer during the spring and summer or the growing season. That is the ideal sort of fertilization setup for your fiddle leaf figs. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, leave a comment down below and uh, yeah. Until the next one. Well, that's it for me. Leave a comment down below. Definitely give this video a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. Miss you guys already. Until the next one.